Okay, so getting rid of noise is one of the most challenging things with sample library development. However, the noise is sort of part of the character in some cases. In Folon, I had this wonderful sound that I really loved, these tape textures that had a lot of grit and noise to them. So how do you keep that essence while controlling it? Here's a method I came up with using voice groups and let's take a quick look at it. Hey, my name is Steve, composer, engineer, and lecturer, and welcome back to the channel. My latest library uses this feature in contact that's quite common in a lot of samplers and a lot of libraries. So it gives me the perfect reason to kind of show it to you today. It's something called voice groups, and they're really useful. Most of the time you want your samples to build up so that as you hit more and more keys, they keep getting added to the last sample that you play. So you can play things like chords. This is actually working because there are multiple samples playing back at once. Now, the problem that can occur with this is that if you play lots of samples at once and they've each got a little bit of noise, every time you add a new sample, the noise builds up. So a lot of the time you have to strip the noise. Now, in some cases, there are actually times where you only want one sample to play anytime you hit a key. Think about it, you don't want the snare drum or the crash cymbal to play five times over the top of each other. You kind of want to, every time you hit that note, restart the sample. So it sounds like you're hitting the crash from the beginning again. You don't want a harmony of crashes, that's just not a thing. So often you only want one sample to play in that case. So I had to do something similar in my last library, Folon. As I mentioned, there were these great gritty tape textures that had a lot of noise built into them, but we know that we need to remove that noise so that as they stack together, they can play chords in a less noisy environment. A little bit of noise is good, too much noise is a problem. But using this voice group technique, I was able to strip the noise out of my samples and then throw it back in using a voice group. Let me show you how. Okay, so this is Folon, I've just loaded it up. It's this sort of bell texture that uh, is mixed with some synths as well. And you get something a little bit like this. It was actually something we created very recently on this channel. It was part of the Contact tutorial series, and if you're just starting out with Contact, I highly recommend it. I'll link it above and below for you. It walks you through the whole process of creating your very first instrument. At the end of that course, I showed a few adjustments, a few extra things that I threw in, and this noise layer was actually one of them. Down here, we have this noisy, gritty texture, and I also threw in these tape samples. So if I just turn all of these on, they become tape sounds. Really cool, right? Like they really sounded very interesting and, and just something I couldn't resist kind of throwing in. However, they sound a little bit dry because all the noise has been removed. I removed all the noise, just as I did in the tutorial series for all the other samples. However, there is a noise layer that you can throw back in. If we pump this one up and then play a few notes, We can now hear that noise coming back. It's that gritty little texture that's just underneath the keys. But it's not too much noise. It's just the right amount. It's the Goldilocks amount, I suppose. It's a little bit of noise that's added back in to give the character of what it was that I was going for, that tape sound. You expect something processed through tape to have some kind of hiss or grit. Let me show you how it's working. So if I dive into the spanner and I jump into the group editor, I have my four groups, my bells, plucks, pads one, pads two. I then have tape versions of all those, tape bells, tape plucks, tape pads one and two. And then I have this noise group. And actually all it is, if I open up the mapping editor, is one sample across all the keys that were available across the other samples. And it's the same sample. It's not being pitched up or pitched down. I've turned off tracking so that no matter what note I play, it's always gonna play the same sample. In fact, let me just group solo this for a moment. So it'll only play this. And let me play a key on C, for instance. You can hear the noise sample there. If I play an octave above though, exactly the same sample, no difference at all, not being pitched up or pitched down. Now that's perfect, of course, for a noise sample. I want that noise to always be the same. It doesn't necessarily have a pitch to it. It's just background noise. The thing is though, if I allow myself to play say 10 notes with all of my digits, that is gonna be a problem. That's gonna be a huge buildup of noise. Now, normally what happens is if you look at a particular group, you can play multiple notes at once, for instance. If I hold down the three notes of a C major triad, you will hear all three notes overlapped. 
One is being added on top of the other as they go and you can still hear the previous one. Most groups play like this, you want them to be able to play lots of chords. Essentially what they're doing is they're playing the same samples or different samples back on top of each other and the more samples you play the more sound you're going to get. So contact has something called a voice count. It allows a certain number of voices to be played at once. And what it basically means by that is a certain number of simultaneous samples being played. It's quite straightforward. It's actually very similar to synthesis. A lot of synthesizers say that they are six voice, for example, or eight voice. What they mean is they can play eight notes together, but as soon as you add a ninth note, the very first note that you played gets dropped off in favor of the new one and it cycles through. Now in contact, it has a global max voice. So in this case, for instance, my max is 64 voices. So if I play a number of samples, then I'm going to be able to reach a total of 64 before it starts dropping off the older ones. Now, the thing to note here is that every sample in every group counts as a voice. One sample is one voice. If you have 10 groups, all with samples across the key that you're hitting, you now are playing with one note, 10 voices. So that max should be high enough in order to make those 10 voices sound together. And then if you wanna play concurrent notes, you're gonna to need to bump that up. If you wanna play six notes at once with 10 groups, you're gonna need 60 voices in order to get all of them playing together. So just bear that in mind that you're gonna to need to think about the samples that are being played across the number of notes, across the number of groups. So a lot of the time the standard is 32, I've bumped it to 64. And if I play that same C major triad again, let's take a look at the voice count that's going up here. So it's saying it's 13 voices. And the reason for that is I am using four groups, my four tape textures, they're each playing a sample back on one note. And then it's playing another note and another note after that. So each group is playing back three samples across four groups, that's 12 of my samples. And then one noise layer sample is being played. But why is the noise one only being played once, even though I'm hitting the key three times? That is the trick with voice groups. So unlike all of the other groups that I've got up here that are just taking advantage of this uh, maximum voice group, this global voice control, the noise is a little bit different. If I look down here on the noise group, I've got something called VG1. And that's not the case on any of the other groups. If I go to the tape bells, for example, it says no voice group. Noise, VG1, you can imagine that is obviously voice group one. And you can pick from a huge range of voice groups, up to 128 there. So plenty of room for different voice groups if you needed to do this on multiple groups. Once I've selected that voice group, then over here I take my voices and I just limit it to one. And then only one is going to play. If I click on this sample, open up the wave editor, we can see this is the sample that I've got loaded into this group. And with only one voice being played, every time I play this noise sample, when I play a new key, it's just going to reset. So I'm going to play the same three notes that I've been playing in the C major triad. And I'm just going to play them slowly and you'll see them resetting every single time. Now, unlike the other groups, instead of it adding each sample and letting the other sample keep being played out, that's not happening in this case. Let's solo up and hear it. So now let's go group solo and I'm going to play those same three notes. If you've got headphones on or you've got the noise up quite loud, you'll be able to hear that it sort of sounds like it's restarting every time I play a note. Because it is, it's restarting the sample. If I change this to say three voices in this voice group, let's go to say, I don't know, 20 or something. Now let me just play a sample to every finger I've got. Hopefully you can now hear that it's getting louder and louder every time I was just playing one after another and it was just getting so loud because there is so much noise being re-triggered. So all I've done is I've just limited one noise group, that noise group to a voice group and that voice group only has one voice in it. That way it's only ever playing one noise sample. So every time I play a new note to the chord or if I play five notes at once, it's only gonna give me one noise sample. What's the benefit? 
the benefit is that I can play this instrument with a little bit of noise added back in, but not have the noise become overbearing, which is what would have happened had I never stripped out that noise in the first place. So now I can play something with tape hiss and grittiness, and I can control the noise, the amount that is there, without ever having to worry about it getting too much. And if I don't need the noise, take it out. I can have the tape samples as they are without any hiss, any noise. So if you're broadcasting or writing something for film, you can just strip it out if the noise is gonna be a problem. So there we are, voice groups in contact, hopefully something new for you, and maybe a little bit of a trick up your sleeve for a noise layer for your instrument as well. Why not subscribe for some more tips and tricks? I'm always releasing them. And I'm always releasing new libraries as well, and that gives us more things to dive into every time. So subscribe and check it out today. I will catch you in the next one.